Welcome everybody to the uh, Paint Basket online uh, classes <clears throat> and uh, today we'll be uh, doing the pastel techniques and uh, we trust that each and every one of you have been um, looking and getting your bits and pieces of equipment together um, as I mentioned earlier on bef previously that you don't need a lot of equipment right at the moment uh, today I'm just going to be using that normal little Mungyo set, um, nothing more than that, so just to show you that we can do quite a lot just with that tiny little set. And um, this, we're going to go straight into, in, into the techniques. So um, I hope you've got your papers ready, your pastels ready, and I think let's make a start. Here we go. Um, and before we do that, let's say I've got this. I'm, I'm going to be working with this upright, and I have my little um, catcher here to catch the dust that falls down. But um, some of you say it's feeling a bit awkward in uh, working with it upright. Not used to that. By all means, uh, work flat or slightly at an angle. But when you do that, you're going to find you're going to. Because it doesn't fall down, you're going to be collecting dust. And then uh, those of you that were with me on the, the last two lessons of the watercolor where I combined the, the pastel with it, I just took the sheet up. What you do is on the, on the side where you've got uh, another extra little piece of paper, just come along and just drop it, as it were, like that. And then the, pa it'll, it'll go, uh, pa the, the loose pastel will fall off. And you can then put it down again and, and, and carry on. So you, every now and again, you may need to just uh, tap the, the dust off. Uh, if you do it, do it gently. Do it to the side so that you don't make uh, too much of a dust storm, <laughs> as it were. And, uh, but in any, in any case, it's really no need to have a tremendous amount of dust flying around. Um, very few of the, the pastel artists uh, work around with, with, the, with, with their mask on unless they have a, a real um, chest problem. Okay, so let's go on to here. And uh, now we're going to start. I'm going to be picking up uh, anyone. I'm just going to say, let's pick up this color. And it's, if you've got the round ones, it doesn't matter. I'm just using these little square ones. One of the techniques is that you take that and you can pull that flat. Looks to me the, I've got a bit of a, a dip in that one. Let's take it this way around. Um, you should be able to pull there. That's better. You can come along and you can cover quite an area like that with a flat stroke. Um, you get the other ones where you can come along and you can fill in an area this way. Um, you can also, some people go cross hatching, they can cross hatch as well too. Especially if you're doing in a tiny little area where this is smaller than this, you can just cross hatch into there. And then what you do is, um, let's say, you can leave that as a tech, uh, uh, let's put it this way, the texture of the paper has given you this. So sometimes you want that type of texture, but if you want it um, nice and even all the way, then you can take a finger and just uh, rub that in you can softly. At the moment, you can see I've still got a bit of a texture there. Um, I'm on the watercolor paper, so this is have it's got a different texture. At the moment, on the water, I've been I'm using the, the 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 back, which is not quite as um, hasn't got quite as much texture as the previous um, as on the other side. So you got that. You can do that, and if you want to really go in, you can press a bit further, harder, and get in, or you can take a little stump, as it were, come in and uh, 
you can also smooth all that out. But this paper is one that will give you this texture. It won't give you that absolute small unless um, absolute uh, smooth, even, unless you're using a, a, a paper that hasn't got quite so much texture to it. Some of the papers have got quite heavily textures. Uh, Ingress, for argument's sake, when you put it on, it's actually got lines across. And when you put across, you, you've got the lines. And you have to work your texture, your pastels, into that one there. So from that, you can go and there's uh, your first layer. Um, that one there hasn't been pushed in, so if you've got colors, uh, put some other uh, uh, pastels over the top of that one, what happens is um, it's not going to grip very nicely, so you, you need to, uh, unless you go using it for a special technique, um, just rub that in and you, now you can come over that and you can use your any other color and you've got your second layer. So let's say we come along and you've got a, you can put some blue over that one if you want to. You can sort of rub that in and you can see what happens. You're going into a gray color. So you can do a certain amount of mixing in the, um, see there, it's like a blue green. It looks like uh, like a turquoise inside there. So you've got that together with that gives you this gray. So you can do, have to uh, do your own experimenting, as it were, to, to um, see what colors you can mix and how it goes. So you've got that one as one technique. This one here, you can also come along and you can uh, do that. And you can see that becomes a little bit more even, as it were, than when you just put the um, chalk completely flat. Okay, so let's do something here. So let's put some colors. I'm going to put some colors in here. Um, let's take another color next to that one. I'm just taking them randomly at the moment here, so you can see what's going to happen. So you can take some of that in there. Um, let's take a nice green, as it were. Let's put that across here. Uh, I'm going to take some blue. I'm going to put that on the side here. to put some here on this side. Right, now let's see what happens now when we come along and uh, this is my wet rag, dry the hands. This is one of the secrets to uh, having less dust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend those two together. Blend my hand, let's blend these two together. Can you see the lovely colors that are coming out? You can do a certain amount of blending. So let's take this one, let's blend this into here. Feed my fingers and then blend this together. So 
Peter, if you can zoom in closely so that we can have a look at the, the types of blending. Come in. Okay, that's fine. Here you can see the, the ready color and the blue has got like a purpley color inside here. Got the yellow and the blue. You can see you can do a certain amount of red. There's green. Here we've got the red and the green. You've got into this color. You've got this like a burnt sienna into um, a yellow. It goes into uh, like an orangey color. So experiment like this. So it's it, you, you can get your little tints and stuff in between. It's not completely like a lot of people say that you have to have the, the actually the tint number one, two, three, four, and you, you can't mix and you can do, you, you can see from here, you can do a certain amount of mixing, which is quite nice. So but if you, when, whenever you do this, keep it, spray it with your, your fixative, and fill up your sheets with all the different types of um, um, mixing and stuff that you do so that you can keep that as a reference so whenever you want to come along and um, uh, use it into um, in, into a painting and you you realize if you want to get that effect there you can take this this uh, green and that yellow and you can get this color here or if you want that, that type of orange which you haven't got it maybe in in your sticks you can combine that and, and that this 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 yellow here and get what you need etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, okay so let's have a look let's do a little bit more of these ones just to get a feel of it so let's take another set across here and uh, into this corner then we can do take a, I'm going to make these a little bit bigger a little bit bigger so when we do it we got some of the original color in between thank you I'm going to take a darker brown color let's put that next to that one like a gray brown let's take another one here let's take uh, this ready color let's take a, a light blue sky color okay time to take that we just do that and I'm going to bring that into here softly there you got some of that nice little pastel colors coming in Clean my fan, do this one. Bring it into this. So look at those nice little, the nice colors that you get there in between. And then I'm going to take this one, the blue and the red. Let's do that piece there. that nice little violet color coming up take this one and that one there so there we have a nice loop where you can do all your different colors that that that, that you can do okay right it's Take this, and I think let's let's start doing some of the objects. Let's take this 
slide. I want to take that and uh, see here. I'll pick this up, and you can see how it collects the dust in there. And that you can dump into the bin whenever you need to. So that's, that's not flying all over the place. Okay. And just put that down here. Right, now we're going to take a sip of coffee. So right. Oh yes, uh, something very important. Let me just bring that back up here. One of the first things you do is when you start um, any paintings, what uh, that you use pencil, and you come along, and you need to do your drawing. So let's do something here. Um, here I've got a, a six B pencil, and I'm going to do it a little bit bigger than normal so that you can see exactly what's happening is that if you're using a graphite pencil um, if you want to do it put it very softly that you can hardly uh, any any without doing any pressing very very soft usually what the best thing is actually a, a charcoal stick but if you want it very light do that very lightly some people are very heavy-handed, so let's say I'm a, um, I'm a bit heavy-handed and I come along and uh, I'm going to do this fairly wide here so the camera can pick it up. Um, I'll do another one here, in other words, I'll do that. Then I'm going to take a fairly dark um, color. Otherwise, if too light, that will show through, and I don't want it on the light. I want to use a dark color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over that. Mm, not showing as much as what it's on this particular paper. Um, but usually there's a there's a shine that comes up. Um, here's one that I did, and if you have a look, this is on the softer paper on on bond. Um, if you can s zoom into this one, Alan, I'm just gonna get it with the the light. I'm gonna get that. Yeah, I want to get the. the can you? S there you are. Just zoom into that one bigger. Can you go more? Into that one. You can actually see the shine uh, through that. So if you go a little bit too heavy-handed, and you do your pastel thing, and all your pencil marks where you've done all your drawing is going to be showing through. And um, that's, that's quite a problem. Can you see that? Look how that shines through onto there. Uh, there's another one that I did here. But that's... There, look at the shine. Look at that shine. And when you look at it at a certain angle, uh, you'll pick it up. You, this, unfortunately, the light with this one here is just not at that right angle as I've had to do that. So that's just one of the things that you need to be um, very careful of. Um, you'll do it in one drawing, and then after that, <laughs> you'll be very careful. Uh, I got caught like that a long, long time ago. Right, let's put that down here. I'm going to start a, a new sheet, and I'm going to pick up... Um, very light green. Uh, okay, pick up this one here, and this this is the set that the Mangyo set. What I've done is each one 
that I've been using, I'll tell you what, let me just put all these back. Any, anyway, let me just put those back and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's put these, all the blues. Um, and I'll, I'm going to do that with each and every one of the paintings in the future. Uh, right, let's just put that one in here. That one in here. And that one, and this is the green that I've picked up from here. Okay, in the future, what I'm going to be doing is um, in a painting where um, it's not, afterwards, not easy to see. Um, I can't give you numbers. I'm going to put, take these, eat, as I'm using, I'm going to drop them into this particular, um, there's just a cover of this one. And then at the end of the class, what I'll do is I'll make a swab swatch of each of these different colors and then take a photograph of that and then you can see all the different colors that 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 I've been using so I'm just going to just drop them into in, into into here then yeah what I've done is I've got a, a stub what I've done is I've just taken a, a paper which is a sheet like this a uh, quarter of a, a, a typing paper and take that, turn it around. The ladies that do um, cake baking will you know, do that. And let's stick that on there. Stop it around. So there now I've got a, a little stub with a small little point where I can go in and blend wherever I need to. I've got another one here which is a, a broader one. And uh, this other one is I've just taken it and rolled the whole lot absolutely um, tight, tight, tight. So um, you can use these, you can buy the stumps, you can also use some um, um, earbuds, things like that for smaller areas. Okay, so now I'm going to pick up this light green if we go back to the painting itself. And I'm going to just draw a little... bit of a circle there very lightly at this stage and then I'm going to just put a little bit of a lighter color in keep inside that one and I'm going to take a bit of the yellow and I'm going to along the top in other words what I'm going to do is we're going to be I'm going to do an apple, one of these green apples, okay, any Smith or one of those. So I just put those in, and the light's going to be coming from the top right into this. Let's take that, and I'm just going to give it a slight blend. Just use your, check with your finger nicely, you don't go over that line. Blend it nicely in. And that's your start of these. So we're going to do that. Okay, and then I'm going to take a, a dark piece of brown and we're going to have the twig, a little. Um, little stem part that sticks out here so let's take it and it's got a bit of a hollow there so let's take it here do that so we start getting the bit of the hollow this here this part here is going to have a sharp line 
because there's a hollow there and this goes down and as it goes down you have a sharp line and then as it comes out the other end it's it's got a, a softer rounding this way in other words it goes in here in that side down here and out the other so we've got that in there and um, we've got a bit of a shadow so I'm going to use that same color very lightly I'm just going to put a bit of a very light just flat in this area here then I'm going to give it a slight blend into there I'm, in other words I'm slowly working up up the shape of this and before I go too sh sharp here we're going to put a, a shadow in and I'm going to take a bit of a darker brown and let the light sort of come it's going to come out from underneath here in this area and much darker here yeah, where it comes next to the underneath and underneath there so that's going to be a little bit darker getting that up there I'm going to take a little bit of the um, some of this, this little touch of a violet in here just a little touch then I'm going to just touch that in there and I'm not going to blend the outside too much because what happens is you you got light that's coming from around the side that's going to re, um, do away with the dark shadow reflections and the darker shadow is going to be right here under the under the apple because the light coming from that side and so go so right so slowly we're going to be building up that so I'm going to take a little touch of, of black and just in that little piece here there's a little dark area I'm going to touch that and it's right in against here just that little piece for that real dark and then I'm going to blend it into the other and that little piece in here right now to get a bit of a darker green which is this one here and then I'm going to right. Let me put all these ones up in this corner here, where you can actually see where I've been ones I've been using. Yeah, that's much easier. <coughs> right. Now I'm going to take this darker green, and I'm going to come in and just softly touch over this. Here we got the shadow side. Very lightly bring it in. And you can actually see the the texture of the paper coming working very nice. See they've gone slightly over the line there. And I forgot to bring my rubber eraser with me. But it doesn't matter. We'll see what we can do. Apple can be all sorts of shapes anyway, so we can work that into the into the, the apple so here I'm going to darken that with quite heavy pressing into there without going right into the bottom end here because here you have reflection um, of the of of the, the what is standing on going up underneath so you've got that nice reflection we got the light against the dark so just very lightly and then this I'm going to work that up into here Let's just work that into there. There we go. There's your apple. Yeah, we get that. And a little 
little jump into the air. A little bit here. Not right to the edge. And there we're starting to build up the nice apple there. And a little bit of a green in here. You've got that lip that sort of goes out. Then we can come in with some more of this, this brown. But sometimes you have all those little spots on your on 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 the on the apple. Little marks. Just gently touch it in without Maybe a little touch of orange, like a little orangey colour. Just a few marks, not not too much, just enough to give it some some different different colouring inside. So you've got that. There's the apple starting to come up, and. Uh, Right now, let's start putting, I'll take some yellow and start putting some highlights in. And now you've got a highlight that's right here on this corner. And you've got that highlight coming here. And you have little patches also along the side where little marks. There only just a few of them. There's that nice light coming from that side, so you'll have all this this area being lit up here. All your highlights and a little touch down here. Snowman is asking, are you using a hundred and forty pound paper? He missed that one. What what paper thickness are you using? <laughs> okay. This I'm using here is uh, my watercolor paper, which is 140 pound. But the, it's it's not necessary that you have to use this 140 pound. Uh, I can be doing this just as easily on um, on 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 a, on a sheet of uh, a shot a sheet of typing paper for for practice. Except the pipe, typing paper has got a very much more smoother texture. So, in other words, you start getting the smoother the texture, the more photographically style you're going to start uh, uh, painting and doing whatever you do. So, but this I could have just taped this to an ordinary piece of paper. Um, I could have even used a piece of brown paper, as it were, you know, that you wrap um, parcels up in. You can put that in. A lot of people do that. You can. Um, wipe up a, a, a background over the top and come in and do whatever you do over that. Um, there are other artists as well too where they do the demonstrating. They can even use a newspaper just to show you that you can use newspaper for practicing on as well too. Just as easy. You can take the newspaper and practice over there. Um, uh, Alwyn Croshaw, if you look at some of his books, he's got when he's doing his uh, acrylics, some of his one, he's got also got newspaper where he put his new acrylics over, and then uh, painted bananas and all sorts of things. So it's not uh, the weight of the paper is 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 not serious when you're doing uh, straight pastels. The weight of the paper will definitely take into account if we when we come to a stage where we're going to combine watercolors, water with the pastels, and we're not going to do it now. We're first going to get the feel for, because I'm working on this stage here, assuming that everyone um, doesn't know anything about pastels. We've got a lot of beginners, and I'm taking them from first stages upwards. Um, if you've done pastels before, <laughs> please be a bit, a bit patient. We've got other ones that are learning along as well, too. Take it as revision. Um, maybe there's an odd little tip in the meantime that you can pick up that you've not known before. You know, we all learn from each other. I still learn from other people, doesn't matter how long I've, uh, I've been on the road. 
as far as art, there's always new things that I'm learning. And that's why every now and again I go to little um, uh, demonstrations where people are doing some demonstrating, and work little workshops to improve uh, and uh, get new little tips that I can then come along and show you and we all grow in, in, in that way. So, okay, let's carry on here. So, it's, it's just to tell you that you, it, it's the, the paper is only really important when um, you're starting to use liquids to stop the crinkling of the paper, the buckling. Okay, so right, let's carry on here. I'm going to take very dark brown and this time I'm going to be using it on the, the edge. If you've got a round pa uh, pastel, just use that little, right on that little edge. And I'm going to take that and I'm, from here I'm going to do that. And then you've got a little tip, a thick on the top here where, where it breaks off. So you've got that. Now I'm going to take a, a, a very much lighter color. Uh, let me take a, this little orange. I think that's going to work much nicer. Um, and then I'm going to, let me just see, work it that way. You can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight on, uh, but almost to across there. And just down in here, there's a little piece there. So you, there's, there's, there's the one apple. So, you know, you can um, go much further with this one. Um, if you really want to go into, uh, as I said, into photographic style, you can come along and you can do a lot more blending. For argument's sake, I can take this here. Um, right, I'll answer those little questions there now. You can take this and you can come in and you can really blend a lot of others into there. But um, for techniques and, and so, and if you're doing a very big painting, that's fine. It works works very nice because this the, the texture is like in, in 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 oils. What you do is a lot of people they want to see the the brush marks in 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 the painting, and uh, this. Texture here is, you can almost call it the, the, the brush marks for the So Right, now let's see what the answer is here. Do I use backing paper of any behind the paper to absorb the pressure? Yes, if you, have, at the moment, with a thick paper like I've got here, you really don't need it because um, you've got to really press hard before anything at the back, unless you've got the really lumpy stuff. But if I'm using very soft paper, for argument's sake, like this um, um, thin, very th thin um, a cartridge paper, well, this is basically like a cartridge, but it's very, very thin. And the, I think, what is this about? 80, 80 grams. And yeah. It's 80 grams, and if you put that on a table that's got some uh, a bit of roughness, and you go, it'll definitely pick up the roughness. In other words, what you're doing is you're doing what they call that uh, that pencil thing. You know, if you want to, um, like a coin. If you take a coin and rub uh, uh, the rubbing. In other words, uh, the rubbings that it'll show everything up. So on a very thin paper, you do it, but. Uh, you need to have some, if it's a paper, uh, the backing, that gives you that bit of absorption inside it. And, and you'd be surprised uh, the, the difference that it actually makes. So, here, yeah, this is so thick, it doesn't, it, it's not picking up any of the, of the others. There was another question. Uh, I've seen very, some very realistic pastel, similar to oils. These the pastels used same same what I'm using here now. People are using the soft pastels. Um, I belong to the Pastel Society, um, New Zealand Pastel Society, and I gave a demonstration at the their national convention some about two three years back, and um, 
there's some very good artists there that um, they paint um, looks almost realistic and yet they also still use this type of paper and what they're doing is for I say what they'll do now is ask, you can spray this give it a spray you know you fix it so that you your, your pastel doesn't mix with the other then you can come over that one and you work in this grain uh, until you don't see any of the the backing paper come through into there and you uh, and when you get fine details what happens is there is you're using a lot of uh, you using pastel pencils inside to do a lot we'll go to pa pastel pencils later on first i want you to get feelings with especially the beginners to get the feeling of using the actual pastel themselves and when you're doing it don't worry about the, the grain it's not serious that's it you you know years back i did everything absolutely um, photographic in 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 my um, pencil work, in my uh, oil work, um, and watercolors and stuff like that, and uh, I, f I found afterwards it's it's it, it's a it's a lot of work, but not only that, uh, it's too photographic. It hasn't got that. It's it hasn't got the the feeling of the emotion that you putting in. You might as well just take a, a, a photo, put up a photograph. Uh, I like I like doing this. At times I come photographic, but most of the times I I, I, I like to leave a little bit of texture and stuff inside. And uh, if you're selling, that's a lot of the, the people. You know, you you if you're doing it for yourself. That's not a problem. But if you're doing it for selling and you got to earn a living. You got to do what the people like, and what's saleable, and they like they like this, like it is here now. <coughs> um, it looks almost like photographic if you look from from a distance. It got that little glint and stuff in it, but it's it's okay. I think that's that's all at the moment there, right? Okay, right. Let's do another apple, but this time let's do a red one. So you could get all the different the different feelings. So doing a red one, <coughs> this time I'm going to be using uh, take a yellow. As you noticed, I'm not using. <coughs> excuse me, oh, my throat. I'm not using pencil. I'm just using the, um, the chalk. And let's let's do another one here. Yes. By the way, if you do go a little bit out, for argument's sake, and you've got another backing, um, a, a, a different color, you just come back with this color <coughs> and just back uh, negative paint into that one, and you can bring your line, this one, that one, until you've got what you need. So I'm just going to let's do a little bit, a bit of green inside that one. Right, that's. Do that. This is going to be the the highlight side. So you want to. Sometimes it's not always easy to get that that lighter color in over the top, depending on what the color is. So let's come along, and let's I'm using this red here, and uh, let's do that. very lightly across there and here I'm going to can you see look at the, the texture of the paper when, when I've not actually worked it in you can see that that the texture and I'm using this flat and then when you pick it up flat that will pick up the texture so in this area here see I can go in and I can that I can work that in circular and get most of that into the in, into there so I can get quite a lot of that texture away if I need to so let's do that and then do oh, I see you I was saying no matter how much if you put the pastel down but it's not moving nicely like yours is could it be the type of pastel that she's using 
No, mind. This is a, almost like a. It's a, like a semi-hard. This is this is not even the soft soft pastel. So the the, the pastel doesn't you don't really move it as such. It's not it's not like um, oil paint that you can take along and, and move it across. It's just it's just the way that when I'm I'm using my finger, I'm actually do, doing it in a, um, a circular fashion. Whenever I do that in I work it in in small little, you can see what I'm doing, in small little circles in, into there. So it's, 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 not, it's not really moving. And are you pressing hard when you're rubbing like that? Um, some places I'm pressing, if I want to get a, a very light, I'll, I'll do it very, very lightly here when I want to get it darker and really work that in. I'll, I'll, that here, now, here I'm pressing very hard in here to get that that dark in other words what I'm doing is I'm working it into the into the paper and into the uh, the, the texture let's put it this way if you if it was canvas I was uh, working it into the weave so, and, and if you working with with canvas as well too what happens is you, you're going to see the same thing you also have see the weave of there and that catches the the light onto it as well, so it's this is not any dis, it's not dissimilar um, in texture-wise to the um, uh, to to oil paints, as it were. Okay, so there, putting that in. Here I'm, see here, I'm going to press a little bit harder on here. You see there, I've got a little bit harder. So I'm going to there now. I'm going to press a little bit harder into this area. In here and here, I'm going to go a little bit softer into there. Okay, and so let's let's put that shadow down. So I'm going to take this darker brown again, and let's put that shit underneath there, and that shadow is going to come out this way. Now this is this is the yeah, you know, this is the black, as it were, right? I'll just use that in that little area, and I'll get this other brown, and just put a little touch into here, and I'll also put a little touch of red into that, just a fraction. Because if this is white, some of this red here will also be reflecting into here. So it won't be red, red, but um, into the shadow. And then now, sharp there. And as I go to here, very lightly I'm touching that there so that you have that, that shadow disappearing. It's darker here. And all the light goes along. And that gives you much more realistic as opposed to a um, shadow that is absolutely as if you've got taken a, a scissors and cut cut that out. So, right now, let's take a bit more of this this brown, and we have, I'm going to tap a bit of it here into this shadow side. It says darkening. Notice I'm putting it in in a circular fashion. See, it's in a circular fashion in there, right up to that edge. Right, let's put the other one now, we'll put this one this way here, but let's put it a bit higher. And I'm going to bring that in there, carefully along the edge. Another thing is as well too, uh, there's a bit of a light line that's going right across there, so somewhere along the line it's had a little bit of a scratch, in other words, uh, it's made an indentation inside there, so 
So be careful of, uh, even when you're doing a, 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 a pencil, which is a 2H for argument's sake, which is very thin and that, um, and it's, it's a very thin line, you'll hardly see it as it were, but if you press too hard, what happens is you're going to have exactly that same thing across. So if you do want, um, you're doing a lion or a cat or whatever, and you want those whiskers to go across like that, you can take, um, um, like I've got shown you in the, in the watercolor one, I've got like a, a all steel all which I've got a nice sharp point onto it, and you just make an indentation in. And when you go across over the top, what happens is you, it leaves that, that little line across. You can, just see, you can just see that one there. So I'm just going to soften the top bit a bit in there, but not the bottom one, because this is your sharper line where it goes in. So right now I'm going to take a little touch of, little touch of orange, because now the highlight of your red is an orangey color. So I'm going to put a bit of orange into this area. A little touch of orange down the bottom, very lightly into there. And a few little touches across here. Just work that in very softly with the, with the finger. Get that in so you can start getting the, the feeling of the, the apple. And also there's some yellow marks. So if you, for argument's sake, you've got yellow and it's got a bit of dirt on it, just take your wet rag and just uh, give it a bit of a clean and there's nice and clean again so I'm going to take some yellow and add the, some of the highlights here right across the top It'll have a bit of a highlight here because of the of the rounding across there. Uh, soften that very lightly. Um, let's add a stem in here again. This time I'm going to take. Let me, before I do that, I just want to put a bit of a highlight here. So, a bit of a get that feeling of the of the whole there this one here is a one on the left here is a wider one this one here is, a, is more of a narrow hole in there right let's take that and, and put a stick take some orange into there actually a little bit of yellow Then I'm going to come inside here, and it's a really deep shade in there. And of course, you can come along, and we've got shiny skin, so you have a bit of a, bit of a highlight coming up on that side if you want a little bit more. You can take a bit of white into that, and that just gives you that extra little bit of a shine there. Bring a little shine across here. Across the top. Uh, and then you've got, let me just sharpen this little edge here a bit. dry my hands, I just want to uh, set edge. Okay, there we've got an apple. Well, so she, um, she noticed that you used the brown to, 
to, to shadow the apple, why didn't you use the complementary color green? I can. If you look at some of the apples there, they... Because um, <coughs> what I'm doing is using the, the darker brown to give me a darker tone. When you put the green into it, there's a tiny little touch. Normally with oils like that, it's when you have a shadow. In other words, I would have had inside the, sh the shadow, if something was throwing a shadow onto there, you'd have that little bit of a green into it. Right, let's take a little touch of green. But it's, it has to be the darker green because of the darker area here. Let's put a little touch of green inside. Just a little touch in, into there. And there it will... It depends on what's, what, what, what I want. Let, let's say some of the, the, the red apples has a bit of green to it. So let's just add a little touch of green. So the little marks. Let's just... Uh, you can add those, little, add those little marks on there. Let me show you something else now. <coughs> See that little dot here? Let's make that into a dent. In other words, there's a, there's a dent inside that one. So I'm going to take a little touch of orange. I'm going to, the light's coming from this side, and it's going to have a bit of a highlight on that piece here. And it's going to be a little bit darker. All right, let's take a touch of green. that side, there you've got a dent. You can see the dent in there. The side will just be a little bit, a little bit darker. It's not a hole as it were, but it's a, it's a dent. And you can also come along and add that a little bit of a highlight on there. And there's a dent into the, into the soften those little edges a bit so it's it's not a deep hole but it's just got a little dent inside there <coughs> that's all it is what it does is you're a bit of a, a lighter on the edge we're on the rounding and a bit dark on the side because it's throwing that bit of a shadow in there and that's that's all it is and that's a, a secret as well too for um, when you're doing um, folds in, uh, in, in in fabric as well. Okay, let's do something more, a little bit more interesting now. We, let's, let's do a hat. So, let me just clean my hands. And uh, I'm going to do a hat in this little area here, down here. Oh, this time I'm going to take very light, like a yellow, very light orangey color. I need a bigger space in here. Okay, so I'm going to do an oval. Bring that down. But there, like that. And in other words, I'm drawing like a tuna tin, as it were. There's your tuna tin. And another thing is when you do these ovals, these ends are not, they, they don't look like that. They must have, they must have the, that rounding in there. There's no sharp, there's no sharp point. How about that? And then I'm going to, like a Panama hat coming out here. Don't worry if your drawing is not 100%. 
we're going after the techniques more than than the drawing skill. So let's put a little band across here. We've got a little band across here. When that band goes across, don't see. I'm going to bring that one a bit higher up. <coughs> don't have that line coming across here joining up with this one. It must be at a tangent away from the other. Otherwise, your eye tends to follow all the way around. So let's what my yellow looks like. <laughs> so let's clean that one up. When you finish, what you can do is, as I mentioned before, take these ones, put it into a bottle with some rice, and um, just shake it around, and that will also clean it up. But here, I'm just going to take my wet cloth, like this, and just give it a clean. And there it is. So let's go along. Let's put some, some yellow in here. And I'm going to put some yellow in this area. Sun's also coming from, well, let's make it from this side. We're going to have it coming from here. So, so you get that coming across here. And take a little bit more of the orangey color in this part. I'm doing very light at this stage. Very light, no rubbing in yet. I'm just blocking in. I don't want to go into here yet because that's where I'm going to have some the highlights. Um, then I'm going to take some some blue. Take some light blue at the moment. Let's take the sky blue first, and I'm going to put some of that sky blue in this area. Have a blue band. Then I'm going to take a, a medium blue. I'm going to put some blue, a little bit of a medium blue in here, like a blue green. And I'm going to take a, a darker blue, almost like an ultramarine, and bring it in here. In there like that. Take it here. Take a bit more of this in here. Take some of the darker brown, which is part of the or, uh, brown is more darker orange. I mean, that's all the shadow area. So I'm building these things up first before I even do any any blending at all. So I'm blocking these in. Bring that in here. Be using much darker color in here. This is a very dark brown, very dark brown here, just in the edge. This one will be here as well too, right there on that edge. See, I'm building up the tonal ranges for this across here and on the top we will have a little bit more of a, a, a bit of an orangey tinge up the top here. This is a straw hat. There we go. 
bit more of an orangey tinge across there, a little touch across here, and let's take some more of this yellow. It's got some green in it, it doesn't matter. Let's take some more of that in here. Okay, I think we got to a stage now where I can start doing some blending. Um, <clears throat> take my finger again, I'm just going to all blend the light color in first. Final blending will be come later, so I'm going to do all the light color first. I don't want to before I taking some of the get the dark colors in there, so now I can go back into the the darker color. Carefully blend that in there, and then join that a bit. So I've got that little piece on the top. Yeah. and push very hard into this area, really get it in here. I'm going to much, much softer. <coughs> That's what the question was a bit early on, what pressure do I use? Here I'm doing it much softer and I'm allowing some of the, <coughs> excuse me, some of the, the white of the paper to come through to show, to give me that, that light business, there. almost like a, a watercolor painting where you let some of the paper come through. There, I'm going to bring that in, very light into there, so I've got that, but I, and I'm going to come back later and do some more, but this is the intermediate stage, so I've got to press that in, going across very light, press quite hard here, bring it in, so I can be, the reason why I'm pressing is it makes it dark, but also I can come with another layer over the top without having to even to use fixative at this particular stage. So, you, and right at the moment, I've not used any fixative at all. Um, somewhere in the forum, I s saw a um, remark where someone mentioned that uh, she has to use a thicker paper because when she sprayed it, it started to curl, which tells me straight away, horribly oversprayed. Uh, in other words, that it made the paper so wet that uh, it's, it's got the curl. When you spray with the masking fluid, <laughs> listen to me, <laughs> uh, with the f fixative, <coughs> it must be done very light spray. All you're doing is just sort of getting um, the, the absolute loose dust to not, uh, um, how shall I put it, um, fall off. So I'm just looking here. I've got this is a bit wider than I sh should have, but anyway. Uh, let's see, okay, now I'm going to, I can come in and now I can come in with the, with the other colors. And you notice now, when I've done that, there's absolutely no, no texture in there. I can come back with some, right, I don't want to make it too orange. I'm going to come in here with the yellow, right across. And there's, now that is absolutely smooth. There's, there's, you don't see any texture in in that dot. I come with the darker brown. See now I can come in with 
the fat over the lean, as it were. See, now that, that, that takes, now I can, I'm not losing any, um, uh, or should I put it this way, the pastel is not sliding over the top. It's, it's a little gripping on there, so I've got that. So I'll bring that down here. That's going to come across. Some darker blue. Get the, the real nice shady color. Okay, I'm going to bring this one lower down. And that's why that look, now the shape's coming better. Bring some of that in here. You do have that little area here where you've got that um, join where it goes in. And here we go, I'm going to put a, a darker line on the top of the band, which has got thickness onto it. And to make a bit of a stronger orangey color here. On that edge. And I'm going to take a little bit of this blue in here. And give you that bit of that shadowy color. Also got a bit of a rim to it. Time to take this brown, and I'm going to. Do you always use your finger for the blendings, especially in these small areas? If it's very small, I'll use an earbud. But I didn't bring any earbuds with me. But I do. I do a lot of blending with my fingers. I find it's more sensitive. You've got. You can work so much nicer because you you got the feel. Of, 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 of what you're doing, okay. <laughs> Nolan just giving me a, a earbud there, okay. Thanks, Nolan. Let's just darken this piece up a bit here. This is the thickness of the room. And, uh, right. You know, here's a, um, an earbud. In other words, I can come in with that earbud and I can come in and, uh, do some real fancy blending. You can, you can get in much easier with this actually than with your finger. Can you see what's happening? Look at those. It's a much more gentle blending now than I, that I can do with my finger. Take that, turn it around. I can, I can see how I'm busy doing that blending. Really blend nicely inside there. Yeah, I've got that. I've got these other stumps that I mentioned just now, which you're using um, a little bit harder than than the other. I'm going to make sure that you don't transfer other colors. If, I'll tell you what I can do as well too. Let's say I want to darken that edge there. I can take some uh, the dark. I can take a bit of this black, for argument's sake, and rub that onto there, and then transfer that onto the edge here. Really 
do the darkening, uh, darker areas inside there. So I can also pick some of that up like that and also, let's say, pick a bit here. Let's say I'm going to see a, a bit there where I do some sh shading. But you can use the shading, I can, a bit of the color on there, I can bring around, let's say, do that. should fall. Okay, so let's do a green bottle. I'm going to do the a light green first. So let's take a nice big bottle here. So let's take it here and I'm going to do this. You want to draw it, draw a soft center line all the way down as far as you want it. And then draw the side that is going to come out, down, and up there. And the reason for drawing this one here is to get the, the center line so that you can then judge roughly what's comparing the one side to the other. To get the shape of the bottle. So you bring that down. So there's basically good enough. The shape. And we've got the little screw top on the side there, there's all the little threads, so let's bring that one up here. This is roughly that we've worked out properly later on. So there, there we've got a bottle. So yes. Yeah, because I'm, because <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm changing. I'm at an angle here. To me, it looks upright. I'm looking at it. It's not upright if I actually if I <laughs> compare it to this edge of the thing here. Okay. Uh, let's say it's got a skew bottom, mate. Eh? <laughs> okay. Now let's do let's, let's let's make a bigger bottle. I'm going to go in front of you for a short while. Well, Just maybe it looks like a box over there. Yeah, the the one pot. Yeah, okay. Let's let's assume it's it's one of these special ones that you bought in the shop for um, for ornaments, and it's it's, it's skew. <laughs> okay, right. Let's carry on then. So now I'm going to that, but this this thing's got a label on it, thing. Eh? So let's say. There's a label across here, or not? No, let's forget about a label. Yeah, that's all right. Let's 
let's say it's got a label, yeah, at bottom, but it's going to come across here and round in there, and then that'll be another label. So let's see if I can put a, let's do that. All right, that's the color of that going to be for that label. So, glass, this is sort of semi-transparent one, this one. So let's come along with the dark green. Usually on the edges is very dark with the thickness of the glass. So I'm going to bring that down here like that. And this one happens to be quite soft. You can actually see the the dust falling off the side here. Uh, do this very lightly here. Yeah? label is, is not right to the bottom, so you still have a bit of the glass at the bottom here, showing through. Remember, the lower you go down, the more circular, the more you come up, the flatter it is. Where you've got the, you can take a masking tape like this, and if you're looking from the top, that's what you see. And as you get down and you're starting looking more downwards, the shape will get more down until you get that. So in other words, the shape down here is when you're looking down in, into it. And as you go up, what happens is it gets flatter and flatter and flatter until you see that shape. And if your eye is exactly the level of the top, that will be absolutely flat. Then you won't, you won't, then you won't see anything. As you sort of look down into the bottle, it'd be like that. And down the bottom, the angle, of the, the rounding is rounded. A lot of people make that flat. And uh, it looks like the bottle is sort of uh, falling over. So let's do that. This is going to be nice and dark down the bottom. Put that. So let's put a bit here. Bit of a not too much at this stage. And I'm going to take a little bit of yellow. In here, you've got that nice little yellowy green tinge in the bottle. Got that semi-transparent look. bottle starting to show nicely now. Come back to that. Do that. Put a bit of a green in here. A yellow at least. Let's work that in that little piece. Down the bottom. Then, let's say here's the top of the, the label going across there. And the label goes round as well, too. So you're going to, there's a bit of a, you'll see a little bit of it on this side here. Not very much, just that hint.
just a hint of it through the back. It's, it's not a hundred percent transparent, but it's a semi-transparent one. So there you can see the, the depth going into the in, into the bottle. And uh, right, let's go here with the label. Bring some more of this in here. Uh, the angle I'm working on there, I've gone a bit too f over that. See, I didn't clean my hands. I just uh, that. I take this. Clean spot, and let's work that here. Notice I'm working everything around circular, the shape of the bottle. At the bottom, let's. around the side, this bottle is round, and you'll have a bit of shading on the side. Also use a little brush, soft brush to to do this as well too. Also works well. Okay, and let's assume there's a bit of a, a logo on this here. Let's say there's a bit of writing. Going around the side. A little bit more down here. Let's say there's a bit of orange in this thing as well too. type thing in this yeah and then at the top I'm gonna have to take this brown and I'm gonna just add a little bit of a shadow in this here you got that and here you got opening right there we've got that Let's Let's do something else. <coughs> Let's take some, we've got a little bit of time. So it's over here.
We're going to make a nice little area across here. Marina's asking, let's say she's also made her bottle skew. How, how would you correct it? Would you make the bottle a bit bigger? <laughs> yes. <laughs> The only thing is you've got to be very careful now because of the, um, the, the, the shape, you're going to lose the shape, so you're going to have to um, change, change the shape. You can make it bigger and change it into a completely different one, that's the only way to do that. But the big thing is, is your start line, that vertical line must be vertical, then it's easy. Um, I did he, standing, uh, working from an angle across here. Um, to me, that looked vertical. I didn't compare it, and I um, <coughs> broke one of my cardinal rules that I tell <laughs> my students, and it is look and compare, look and compare. I didn't compare the center line of this one with the the line of the edging of the of the paper and it's only when Nolan <laughs> pointed it out that <laughs> my bottle was <laughs> completely skewed. Uh, I think I drank a little bit too deep out that bottle there, eh? And, and I had a skew look on life. <laughs> couldn't you have used your brain to erase it? Yes, you can, but the, the thing is you still have that that funny, funny shape where you, you could, you could uh, Erase some of this part here and then bring that out. Um, there's another one as well too. You could come along and with your brown bread or your uh, stuff, you can roll that in and you can get most of all that off that you've that you've put on. You can sort of virtually bring it down almost to 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 like this colour here. You know, is right down enough that you can come back and work over it again without any, but uh, we, we, as we go along in, in, in the classes, um, we'll, we'll be encountering that for sure, with places where we're going to have to uh, do some changes. So, right, let's do that. Uh, let's do something here. I'm going to take that and I'm going to That, yeah, and that is where I actually needed some rubber, some eraser in that one there. Is, let's see what I can do here with some some white. And this is not a very soft white. Okay, so that will do for the demonstration purpose. Right there. I'm Putting some, some white into this area, which uh, works out quite nice because that gives me that very, very much lighter colour than than uh, than this colour over here. So let's take a darker brown, and I'm going to. Do that. I suppose some of you can guess already what I'm going to do.
So at the moment, everybody's trying to guess what you're drawing. Is it a is it an egg or a water drop? What's what's the guesses? A chicken, an egg, and a water drop. <laughs> chicken. <laughs> and some eyes here. <laughs> In the chat box we were joking earlier that you were probably going to turn your uh, hat into a birthday cake at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it into slices. <laughs> <laughs> right, I just want to talk on this, but yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be a water drop, but it's... Yep, everybody can see it's a water drop now. Okay. <laughs> suggest let's make it into a teardrop so it's been running down the wall so right let's get here's this other nice color that I got here this one soft, very really soft white here to show it up nicely, but it's also got a glint down the side there. And I'll, here, I need, I need a real soft, sort of running down the, and sometimes it makes a bit of a, like a zigzag as it, as it runs down. Is, is this here. That is a bit more. Oh, got some green there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Actually, this is lifting some of the color. side. There you go. It's the same principle if you're doing little grapes and all sorts of things. So what we got to look here? Let's 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 do Okay. Now let's let's do something else. Nolan suggests I do a, a showing a transparent glass. Okay. Quite nice. So let's take this and let's uh, put a nice dark background that'll show the the glass up very nice. So let's get a dark background. Do some cross etching. Take that. Let's 
pressed quite hard here now. Look it right into a nice solid colour. Now do a tiny little glass here, that's that's all right, because you want that to show that nice transparent. Okay, so let's work something here. Here's the top of the glass. I'll do it very lightly first. Some sketching here. Right now, I'm going to. Right, Bring it out a bit from the background. Throwing some of the and the edges of the glass, because of the thickness, will pick up some of the the light. Take it that. It's coming from from this way up that way. So you're catching these edges. Got some in there, you got some of the very light background. Catching the room on the side. Some little reflections coming along. Down the bottom here, when the glass goes down, you also have that reflection there. You've got some down the bottom here where they've got that rounding. It's just a quick little looking at you, yeah. my perspective is all wrong again from where I'm sitting here. <laughs> 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 still going to Oh, a little tipsy, tipsy here today. Let's bring that one that's a bit too low down there. <laughs> anyway. 
<laughs> oh, the techniques on these are. Then you got that real little. Uh, can't get the, the real reflection. When I want it, it doesn't come. There we go, some of it. Okay. I think it's the demonstration is there where you can still see the, the background coming through. Let's say, for going to say that glass is a little bit um, thick and it's got a slight frostiness to it. You can come along and um, put a bit of the this colour in there like that and lift it from the background. So you got that. Yeah, you'd have the same thing. Right. Any questions? to. <clears throat> I've got a little space down the bottom here. Um, do you want me to do a tiny little bunch of grapes? About five, uh, five or six of them. Let's see. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, near. Yeah, more. Okay. <laughs> Painting light over dark is so different from watercolor. Yes, you can. Um, to re especially if you've got the very soft, soft pastel, very soft ones, and you've uh, hardened, or put it this way, you've um, uh, fixed the the bottom layers, you can come over and then put the, the lighter uh, along the top. But if it's all too soft, what happens is it, it tends to go and blend in with the other soft color. So I think, let me just show you something before I do the grapes. Well, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to just take that glass of water out of the road and do that so I don't spray onto the screens there. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll start from here. It's, it's very light spray. I'll start from here, just off the edge, and go right across and across and like that. And you'll notice that. Uh, it's it's not that much that's going to be running, so I'm going to do that. Let me just do a quick test. Okay. There we go. Thank you. So in other words, you're starting off the paper and then running all the way across to be off the um, other edge. Uh, yeah. In other words, I'll be off this edge over that edge, off this one, but I'll overlap them as they go down. So in other words, I'll do the, do the one, let me do that, there we go, I'll do one, one layer, then I'll just overlap that one, and I'll come down, and I'll overlap the other one through there. But uh, it should actually be done in, in an area, I, I normally, what I normally do is I take mine outside, and then give it a spray so that uh, if you do this, so I think at some stage or other, what I'll do is I'll get myself a little fan. And uh, when I need to spray, I can just put this little fan on here. That when I spray, it'll take it immediately away from me. Okay. Okay, so let's do here. Let's do very... Let's do some... Very quick little sketches. Actually, this is where you, the pencil comes in very nice for this. 
say there's another one behind this one here and there's another one behind here and let's say there's a little one here sitting here all by himself he's a loner okay do that so let's see what color shall we make it the green grapes right i've got some Ooh, my <laughs> yellow is full of green. Anyway, it'll go nicely for the green grapes. So, right, let's... Ooh, it needs to be done from the side, Nolan. Let's do that. Take that camera. Because my hand's going to be in the road. That camera, let me do this sideways here. Okay. So I'm going to do the. I'm not going to worry about the pencil marks. I've done that very rough. Yeah, we got this little one here all by himself. Take some some darker green and uh, bring this around here. The light's coming from that way. So that's going to be a bit. Sh Blocking in at this stage. green I think some shadows over there a bit. My big fingers. And I'm going to take some like a darker brown and start working in some of the, the shadow areas. in here, down the side. A bit 
small for this work here. If I had my pencils here, I could have done a much, much nicer job. But anyway, it's just the basic principle of it. So I'm going to take some white. Now the light is coming from this side, so you're going to be much lighter. Let me just clean that off. There's a bit of the, the blue sky, it's outside, a little touch of blue in it. Mm, let's say there's a little touch of mauve, just a little Warmth in it. Now, this is where I need my soft pest. Completely the soft pest. You can show the highlighting. It just doesn't want to show that this one is not a bit on the hard side. But let's say there's a few little little loose ones that have been and he's got this little stick out the side there as well. Just one's broken off there. Little touch of Orange highlight. Bit of white in there. Okay. Yeah, that's very. This one is very rough. But anyway, that the principle is there. So I think that's this call it a day and then next week is going to be the farmhouse let me just get this off here and uh, I'll be giving a template so get yourself a sheet of paper similar to this one here doesn't have to be watercolor we won't be doing watercolors but it's 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 nicer if you can have a, a, th a thicker piece of paper anyway because it's for framing, and you, it's, it's going to be much easier um, to to handle. And uh, hopefully, the one we're going to be making will be good enough for you for you to frame your first. Those who are doing the pastels for the first time <coughs> can be your first pastel painting, and then we take it from there. So uh, it's quite an interesting one because it's. Um, from a photograph that I took down at Lake Hayes in the New Zealand South South Island, uh, just outside of Queenstown, and I was there. I was visiting a um, artist friend of mine, um, Ben Ho, a very very well known uh, uh, watercolor artist down there, and I went to go and visit him. And at, this, at that time, I took the photograph. So I hope you've enjoyed today. And uh, for those who are beginners, that uh, you've uh, learned something and uh, get yourself rearing to go. We're looking forward to seeing all of you. I see the nice crowd that have booked already for the farmhouse, and uh, we'll be seeing you then. So in the meantime, a lot of practicing. Enjoy yourself and uh, use those pastels. Don't forget your wet cloth and a dry cloth 
and you keep your hand. I mean, there's, there's my fingers. There's hardly any thing. There's hardly there's no dust on the on the table or anywhere here. Only a little bit of dust is in this little collector here. Okay, but from me, from Nolan, we say have a good day, have a good week, have a good sleep. If it's night time for you, and we'll be raring to go in a week's time. So from Nolan, myself, God bless. Bye bye.